Welcome to Two Souls Podcast, a podcast to shift, impact, empower, and disrupt your consciousness, ultimately allowing you to thrive in this human experience. Now here are your hosts, Amber Meganhauser and Angela Blaha. Welcome everyone to Two Souls Podcast. Amber and I are here and we have an amazing topic for you today. Amber, what's our topic? Yes, today I thought we would talk about how we use food to build up our energy versus using food as a pacifier. Yeah, I've always used food as a pacifier because <laughs> that's what I was taught to do, right? Me like too. I never, you know, like yeah. back in the day when our parents were raising us, it was more of a, uh, yeah, it was a pacifier. It was totally like you pacified your emotions with it. And you, well, we yeah. did, you know, it was, you know, every Saturday my mother would cook these long johns and all these treats, right? And the entire weekend was based on food and treats and getting together with our family but it was a pacifier for our emotions to deal with the family. <laughs> Looking back, like that's exactly how wow, it that, you know, you, yeah, you don't really think about it like that, but so many people do that and we use food as a comfort to get through it. <laughs> so to say, Right? Why would food be a comfort? You know, we talk about comfort foods. Why do we have to have food be a comfort when in actuality it should be used as an energy source only? I think that, you know, especially sweets, because I'm I love sweets. And so mm -hmm. I think it's the such a satisfying feeling when you taste something amazing. And it kind of, ma you're right, it totally masked the emotions that you have going on. Well, food with sweets in particular become an addiction because of the sugar content. And, you know, there's an addictive property that happens. And so when we're using food to pacify those addictions, or we use it as the pacifier, um, what's the underlying tone here? Like, what are we trying to cover up? Because really that's what addictions do, right? I mean, addictions just sort of cover up or mask yeah. or, you know, keep things hidden. <laughs> what is it that we use food to cover up? For me, I know that I roam around the kitchen um, looking for when I'm bored, which is a good part of my day. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, because I don't keep myself busy enough or, I don't have a, you know, it's just a pattern. It's a pattern for me. And I roam around looking for something. Well, what is it that I'm really looking for? Because food does not pacify that. Yeah. It is the I mean, boredom that, too. Like when you're bored. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what happens to you when you're bored? So you have to figure out what you can do with your hands. You keep, you know, like when you're bored, you just have this natural, you know, a lot of people, whether you chew your nails or you smoke or you eat, there's this like hand to mouth motion. And I think that people just have to do something with their hands. So when you're bored, you're not just sitting there, you're, you're eating. <laughs> Yeah, for me, so it's I my mind. It's the movement. Mm, yeah. Yeah, that's probably true. Trying to get the body to move a little bit more. Yeah. For me, so it's, how can it's a mind issue. Notice. Go ahead. Just you're being bored. And can you go into that a little more? Like, what do you mean, like, uh, can you just explain that a little more? Yeah. So my mind is um, con when I'm when I'm energized, like I am constantly thinking of new things to do or new ideas or new concepts or um, 
something new, you know, something that I've not experienced or I haven't tried before, or I'm helping others, right? Find something new or something that gets them excited and passionate about. Um, but what I've noticed about myself is the boredom comes when I'm not passionate, when I don't have any passion and when I'm not super excited about living, um, to the fullest and I'm just sort of like, you know, getting by. Um, that's when the boredom is. And, you know, a good portion of, I'm going to say a good portion of my life has been spent in boredom. And I've been like that since I was young. Like, that's the only thing that I can remember from my early, early childhood is how boring life is because it's just a repeating pattern. I've, I've seen how it repeats, how the patterns just repeat themselves my entire life since I was like three or four years old. Um, and that to me is extremely boring. And when I find myself in the patterns is when I'm bored. But, you know, I try to cover it up with food. And so yeah. my mind really needs to be I, in that creation mode. I really think that you saying that, you know, I think a lot of people do struggle with that is, is the boredom. Because if you have nothing in your life that you are passionate about you have no drive to do anything create anything you're just kind of mm -hmm. in this weird free boredom space that it actually is it's not fun being in that space no it's not for me it's like torture <laughs> Yet I have this pattern of torturing yeah. myself apparently because I stay, you know, I'm in that sort of <laughs> uh, boredom cycle, really. But at the same time, you know, I try to, I, you know me, I try really hard to be super creative and like in that mode of creation as much and as pos as much as I possibly can. Um, and yet everything here has already been created, right? We just need to tap into the creation of it. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, it's that whole concept. Like it's really about where your belief systems reside too. And, you know, but pat food is definitely a pacifier for me. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So yeah. why is it that we do not it's use definitely it as... for me too. But... Go ahead. I, I was going to actually kind of say that, that, you know, like, why don't we use it to energize our body instead of, you know, like the junk we put in our food, especially in that boredom phase, everything that we eat actually hold us back so much. And I've really noticed this since I had the sickness. Um, <laughs> this is something that has come up and it's almost like, this is really weird to describe, but um, about my like fourth or fourth day, fifth day in, um, I really started to notice how anything that I wanted to drink or eat, it's like I could see what it was doing to my body before I put it in my mouth. And so it it made me so much it my awareness grew so much about like the internal part of my body versus um just thinking oh i'm gonna eat taco rice tonight actually okay so this is a great example i i love taco rice and it is one of my favorite things and i while during this whole process i got super super sick from it and i was just throwing up and as this is happening I could see like all these like strains in my body of like what was going where and how it was helping this how it was affecting this organ that this doesn't agree with this organ like it was it was very intense and actually a very crazy experience but since that has happened my awareness with food has grown so much. And it's almost like every time I even think about eating, um, I see the like after effects before I put it in my mouth. So it makes me second guess like everything I have 
been eating or drinking. And, and I drink a ton of water, but I drank some coffee the other day. And man, it's like, I could feel what it was doing to me. And even like seeing how it affected the inside, having the caffeine or having the dark colors, like it was, it was very intense. So I think like our awareness with food, we just don't think about it on like a health level. You think about it on a hunger level and you don't actually realize that it's holding you back and not pushing you forward. Yeah, that's, you know, I think that if we, if we all became very conscious about the sickness and what it can do for us, the miracles that it can create for us versus, you know, all of the atrocity, the belief that we are going to die or, you know, whatever. Um, if we were to focus on that, you can see the gifts. Like, Amber, this is a huge, huge gift that you're moving into, right? Seeing what yeah. food, the chemicals and the, the food itself is doing physically to the cellular structure. This is giant movement. Yeah. <laughs> right? If we all like yeah. just sat yes. back. Yeah. If we all just sat back and said, wait, what is the miracle here? Um, we could all move into these kinds of new God, isn't that exciting? Like that to me is like super, super exciting. It like, has been um you know, I, I didn't really talk about this experience in our previous recording just because I wanted to talk about other things. But this has been honestly one of the coolest things that I've gained from having that. And mm -hmm. like, it's so it's so hard to explain like how it happens. But but yeah, like it has completely changed my view on food on how we take care of our bodies like when you can see what the the good and the bad of what it is actually doing to you internally you look at it differently yes. and like without even really changing anything like by itself it it changed my taste buds. It changed the way I think about food. It changed the way I looked at food. It changed how it affects the inside of my body. Like it, it changed my whole view on food. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I don't, what you, ever since I had this, like I don't even eat the same things. It's actually kind of weird, <laughs> you know, and eating like nothing, anything I ate before, like, nothing sounds good. Nothing. Like if I could live on water, I would, because it's the only thing that tastes like really, really good to me. Well, you know, that is the only thing that we really need. I mean, the breatharians can teach us, you know, that we don't really need food. We just need water and light. That's true. I mean, they've been teaching that, that, that true. For, for eons. And I see, you know, I've always talked about being a breatharian and how important it it is to literally do the breathing exercises that they do and to drink uh, the fluids that they drink and their consciousness, like their level of conscious awareness is without the chemicals in the body. It's astounding. They're astounding. The one, the breath areas that I know, like they're way beyond conscious, what we believe is consciousness. I believe it. Cause I feel like I've seen some of that now that this has happened. Mm -hmm. So tell us about your vision. And you're right, like, what we totally does it don't. look like? No, we don't. So tell us what it looks like when you, you know, when you get these sort of visions or messages. It's almost like um, it like starts in my mouth. And before I even take a bite, it's like I can see it going down and you can see um, your organs working differently by what you are ingesting. Um, like the, t the taco rice thing was, that was so crazy because, and I think it was because of, you know, just the, the greasiness of the meat, but it, I, I don't know. I'm not really sure exactly what that was because it, there obviously was multiple things, but when I, when I seen that, I literally, that part of it, it's like, you could see, um, 
all of your otter like it's like it was going down my throat and it's like once it hit my stomach it went everywhere and it's like there was this um like a wrap around everything that like all of your blood vessels and um things like that all your muscles even your tendons it's almost like there was like this wrap around them and it was blocking them off to how they needed to properly work because of what I was ingesting, if that makes sense. Wow. Wow. And yeah. the, the first time it, it was very, very intense. And, and obviously it made me sicker than I was so sick that day. And um, I don't even know why I tried to eat it, to be honest with you, because I, I just didn't really feel that good. And um when I had the sickness, actually, I was like puking sick for like three days. It was more that for me. And I think it was because I think the sickness brings in things that we are dealing with internally. Mm -hmm. And food is something I have always struggled with my whole life. And I think that's why the food thing was like my biggest aha with all of it. And so like now that I'm like past all that. Um, even when I have a thought about like, okay, yesterday, um, I didn't take lunch with me to work. And about one o'clock, I'm like, dang it, I need to eat something. And I really didn't want to go to the convenience store to eat because like, ever since all this happened, I cannot even put anything in my mouth that is greasy because I will instantly get sick. Mm -hmm. And so my brother-in-law was like, Hey, I made cheese broccoli soup yesterday. I'll go grab you some. So I'm like, okay. And came back. He had that and brought that. And it's like, while he went to go get that, I was in, in my, my, all this stuff was coming in about how, if I would have went to the convenience store, it's like, I, I seen what I would have got. Cause you either grab a pizza or something to snack on, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I could see, exactly what that would have did to me versus eating the broccoli cheese soup and it's so it's so hard to explain it but it's like I can see it in my head and I know what this is going to do to me versus what this is going to do to me and before I even eat it it's like I my body like shifts on how it's gonna feel versus if I choose this or I choose that. Yeah, these, I honestly, and I've said this to our group that we hang out with, I honestly think that this sickness is bringing in superpowers. This to me is a superpower. When you can physically see through your third eye, through your mind's eye, through your consciousness, exactly, <laughs> excuse me, exactly what's going to happen. When you ingest something, that is a superpower. I never looked at it like that, but you're totally right. And I haven't really told anybody about this because I know it's like, I knew you would get it. But I mean, people think that you're like super crazy. You know what I mean? And that who thinks like that or, but they think it's your mind. And that, that, that's where it is. Your superpower is your intuition showing you which is better. Exactly. Exactly. There's a difference between intuition and the mind. And we have been so caught up in, you know, well, how do you think? Well, I don't really think I just pull information from the consciousness. Right. So, um, and yeah. I try, re I try harder. I try not to have too many belief systems because I know that they hold me back, but I know that they're there. Um, but if we can control them or rein them in, which is what my, sickness brought me was, um, you know, how to um, control things that foreign things that come into the body, and how you can control the mind and the emotions and um, how you can control that, um, whatever it is that comes in, whether it be a virus, a bacteria, or, you know, parasites, whatever they are, that try to come in and harm the body, but chemicals are one of those things that come in and harm the body. So, you know, I think, that, I, yeah, I think that these kinds of, I, I think this is what I say to all our listeners 
is stop viewing these things that happen to us as atrocities and start viewing them as miracles and look for the gift that they bring us. Whether it's an emotional gift, a physical gift, a mental gift, or a spiritual gift, like I, I feel like we're missing the big pictures here. We're missing the opportunities and the potentials because we're always in this lacking yes. kind of a mentality through these crazy belief systems that try to hold us back. And we need to start looking at everything as these freaking miracles, which it is. You know, we just had a Absolutely. big... Yeah, we just had a big um, gathering of our, our group last night about 2020, you know, like how do we want to create um, in 2020 and who do we, how do we want to be different this time of the year, next year versus where we are now. And um, mm -hmm. I think, I feel like every one of us started to look that way. Like what's the miracles that I can create in 2022 versus where, where have I been healing? Where have I been lacking right in the past? And each one of us has experienced, you know, these gifts um, in a whole different way. And there was super power in our group last night, like super power. Um, and yes, there was. Right. And everybody seems to be really moving into alignment of who they really came here to be. I mean, it was just amazing. And it was like, yep, super cool. And I think that that moving forward into 2022, we need to start looking at these things, you know, at food as an energy source, which is really what your power is now versus it being a pacifier for your emotions or your addictions. And then ultimately it becomes yes. the addiction, right? So yeah, like that's yeah. super. I mean, and, and to be honest, with myself and, and everybody. I mean, I have had an mm -hmm. addiction to food since I was a little kid, you know? Oh yeah. So Me it's too. almost like that, you know, that that's just it. Like people, you said it perfectly where people look at things as an atrocity instead of mm -hmm. it catapulting you forward where this, the sickness that everybody dealt with, um, not one of us used it as an atrocity and mm -hmm. every single one of us gained like these phenomenal superpowers from it. Yes, exactly. So it's, it's how we view things. Like if you viewed it as all of us did and realized like how much you actually gained for it, instead of feeling sorry for yourself that you actually have it, which then it does shut you down your body because you're allowing it to. You know, we, we didn't allow that. And we stated from the beginning that, no, this is going to make me even better than I was before. And every single one of us has just had these like phenomenal experiences with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, even if, well, what it does do is it brings up your shit. Let's just get honest here. Like when it you're, does. you know, when <laughs> yes, you're, <it> does. <laughs> when you're confined for 10 days, it, it's ultimately just being confined is going to bring up your shit. But <clears throat> what this <clears throat> consciousness does, you know, everything has a consciousness. Let's not, let's get this out here. Every single thing has some level of consciousness. You can use that to your yes. advantage. When you know yourself, you can use every level of consciousness to your advantage. And I feel like that's, you know, part of this new earth creation where we're moving into this, you know, new paradigm, this evolutional kind of experience that we're having is when you understand that the programs that you've been fed before are just like hand me down, you know, torn up jeans or ripped up clothes and that's all that you get then you're going to, you're going to try to make the best of it or you're going to wear it. And you're going to be like, well, this is who I am. No, those kinds of days are gone. What needs to be, what, what we need to understand is we need to take the consciousness and create miracles from them. Like we're the creators here, right? We're the ones that are in the human body. We live yeah. on this earth. 
we, you know, we need to start understanding our power. And when I say that, we need to understand our consciousness and how to make, how to take advantage of every single kind of consciousness. Yes. Because yes. that's how miracles get created versus, you know, being, being in those kind of weird patterns um, and old belief systems that really served, you know, probably 20,000 years ago, but they don't serve us anymore, but we're still hanging on to them. And for what? Yeah. For pain and suffering? I'm done with yeah, that they, kind of stuff. <laughs> right? We yeah. do not live that world. And, and yeah. why would you want to? That's just what I don't get. You know, like so many people live in that pain and suffering instead of realizing that they actually have a choice to make their self and their life better. To know their self enough that you want more for yourself. Well, I think that lots of people have fear of change and it takes work. I'm not going to lie. It's been a freaking roller coaster of work my whole entire life. You know, 90% of the people would not want that. <laughs> you know, they just want things yeah. to be easy and to just, you know, move through life no matter what. If they have to hold on to old belief systems, they just don't want to do the work emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually to ask the questions to, like, you know, self-improve. And that's really what being human is, is the, how do I self-improve? Yeah. And I think so many people too are, it, you know, it is the work, but you also have to, um, deal with your past, you know, like, so I think so many of us like mm -hmm. bury our emotions and, and like my food deal, you know, I've, yeah. I've buried that emotion for so many years because it's what I've always done that it's sometimes it's hard to face that. And, but once you do, you, it's gone. Like you, you just, you don't hold on to that no more. And you just heal one thing at a time. And before you know it, you're a whole new person. So yes, it is work, but it's the most rewarding work you're ever going to do. Mm -hmm. And it never happens overnight. It's about growing your awareness. And the more you grow, the more you change. Yeah. I mean, we look, I look at back change. to who I was. Go ahead. Well, we look at change backwards. You know, we see it as this big. Yeah. Rolling a stone uphill or whatever <laughs> that comment was the other day. Um, <laughs> you know, we look at it like that when actually yeah. it's not, it's not the change that should be the focus. It should be the steps to get there. Like what kind of a, easy step can exactly. I say you know if you're climbing up a mountain you're not gonna you're not gonna take the hardest route you're gonna try to take the easiest route it's exactly the same thing with change well everything in life you know what's the easiest route where can I flow yep. versus where where am I in resistance we talk about that all the time as well you yeah. know and now these superpowers are trying yeah. to come on board for every single one of us and we're resisting it you know a good portion of Humanity is resisting the superpower. And look, yours is like right here yeah. in front of you. And you're like, dang, can I help other people with this now? Right? Like this is, this is a giant superpower. Yeah. yeah. It's huge. And mm -hmm. you like, I just, I look at everything differently now. Like mm -hmm. everything with food has totally changed for me. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I know oh. it'll never go back. And I just, so I'm excited to actually looking forward a year to see like how that has changed and evolved. Mm -hmm. How exciting is that? See, that's passion. That's when you are like, yeah, I'm not going to be bored because now I have this new superpower <laughs> to play with and to experience with yeah. and to experiment with, right? And now like, where can I take this? That's creation. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, me too. We'll let you. Yeah. I'll, I will let you all know in a year how this superpower <laughs> has evolved into something super amazing. <laughs>
Actually, let's push Amber over the edge, all, all of our listeners. Let's help her uh, use it on all of us and contact her if you're interested in some sessions. <laughs> yes, I would love to do that. That is a great idea. Thank you. I'm definitely, I'm going to work on that today. So after you brought that up, asking me if I can also see it in others, it I never, I haven't tried that yet. So I'm definitely going to work on that and see what I can see today. <laughs> For sure. For sure. Yeah. See, everything evolves. That just, even us talking about this just happened a few weeks ago and look at how much it has already evolved. And now I want it to become 10 times bigger. So yes, mm -hmm. anything can happen. Like nothing holds us back. It's about how you view it. You can either use it to your advantage and go 10 times further or you can it'll send you backwards if you allow mm -hmm. it to so it's all yeah, about so what we do and what we don't allow in our lives yes and let's stop pacifying ourselves and let's move into creation yes absolutely we would like to thank everybody that joined us today it was a great topic i think some Food is something that we all struggle with at some point in time in our life. If you have any questions or want some advice on how to figure out your own power and, and what you can gain from it, please reach out to Angela or I. We would love to help anybody. Until next time, from our soul to yours, have a super fantastic day. <laughs>